Hello again, this is Ryan from Better Tattooing, and today we're going to be discussing blending and overlays when doing a tattoo, and some different ways to approach it, but also some other stuff, I don't know, right on. <laughs> Now that that's over with, blending and overlays. A lot of people ask me questions about this and I find it um, interesting because we all have different approaches getting into blending and overlays. And the most common one we're seeing right now is just like the fan method, right? Where you just like kind of take your wand shader and magically make things blend over top. And this is done through random scattering, right? Which is, which is fine, it's just it's not very controlled. And when you're doing it, you're actually trying to decrease the amount of pigment that you're putting into the body might as well write that down, right? Fanning. Not fanny, you crazy Australians and Kiwis. Uh, <laughs> technique. Uh, geez, I can't spell it all today. Sorry, the power's gone out twice while I started doing this, and now I'm like having a bit of a like mental break. Anyways. Um, so yeah, when you're doing this, you're relying on just random scattering of dots by moving your hands just any which way, but in kind of a controlled curve, almost like you're, you know, uh, pencil shading with like a number two and you're just like slowly blending things off, right? And what this does is it creates a very soft application of color, even if you do have like good um, penetration into the skin. And when you go to do this, then you're grabbing another color directly after it. Let me grab all these markers. And you're doing the same thing, right? You're fanning over the same spot and you're creating these same randomizations that adds to a soft tone. And through doing this multiple times, what you're doing is you're creating a greater amount of pigment in the area, which then heals out and looks like nice, soft, smooth blends. This can work, but realistically, depending on the type of tones that you're using and uh, what colors like whatever tint that you've decided to apply to the body, the more white or the more um, pigments that you're utilizing that are susceptible to uh, photodegradation, which we just made a video about that, um, they're gonna end up fading out, leaving you with a much more faded looking tattoo. So this is okay if you're gonna use a fanning technique um, for short term results. Um, it's, it's really good, especially if you're trying to do blending over top of existing colors that are there. But for the most part, when we're thinking about blending and overlays, I'm not actually talking about the fanning technique. This is very specific when we actually use something like this. And I think I made a video about it before, but I don't remember because there's hundreds of them now. Sorry. Uh, <clears throat> maybe we'll redo it and make it into like one of those three minute like shorts so that everyone can just go, oh. Should probably be a smart idea. Okay, so when we're talking about blending and overlays, there's two things we've got to think about with this, right? And the first is concentration of pigments. And then we're gonna use uh, as the, the second thing that we need to think about, one and two. Um, which came first? Don't say it, you dirty birdies. Um, so when we're thinking about concentration of pigments, we're thinking about how much pigment that we're actually putting into the skin, right? If we have a linear graph here where we have 0% of pigment versus 100% of what's actually able to be put into the body is being put in there, then this, this is our concentration, right? If we have a skin section and we have 60% sealed it with red, there's only so much more that we're gonna be able to put into the skin when we're deciding to blend off of it, right? If we do a 100% solid tone of black, trying to blend on top of it is gonna be extremely difficult, right? Because one of them is gonna outclass the other, especially if you're blending over top. But it really does come down to which came first when we're thinking about blending and creating our overlays. <clears throat> Realistically, let's say that you put 100% black, you fully fill that space where you want it to, and then you decide to put red on top of it, right? So if this is first and this is second, what's happening now is we have this 100% of black that is going to be knocked either into the skin or pulled out due to the additional trauma that we're creating, right? So realistically, each pass that we have is reducing 
the total quantity of pigment that's in the skin and also increasing the trauma to the body which is going to additionally push more out of the body or bring some in. So when we have something like we're adding red over top of it, if we do a single pass with red, what we're going to end up with is a very, very, very dark red or a tinted black with red, right? If we do another pass over, it is going to continually just skip down, right? It's like taking a cup full of ink that's filled with like, let's say black. And we have another cup that we can continually refill that we keep pouring into the black cup, causing it to overflow of white. Enough times that we pour it into it, the more it's gonna become more like that true color that we're trying to add to it. But it, it will never ever be able to reach that full amount. Especially when we're thinking about it in skin, right? Because the more times that we go over something, even if we have sits in between it, the greater chances that we are to have increased scarring after the healing of the most previous session, right? If you go into a spot 30 times, even if you use perfect technique, there is a greater chance for you to have scarring than if you went into it once with perfect technique. Pretty simple, right? Uh, inversely on this, if we decide to start and pack a color, was something that's like red, right? And we start with our red and it's number one and we have, you know, 60, 70% worth of that volume going into it. And then we start dumping additional colors onto it to fill it up. Like we have 5% of, you know, whatever green that's going to be added to it. So we're like muddying the heck out of this. It's still only going to be able to push that up incrementally until the body has had enough uh, to basically fill the space that you're trying to get into there, right? That's also mitigated by how many passes it takes. If you try to overlay 12 colors on a single spot, there's a good chance that you're going to end up scarring the skin very badly. Well, if you just have two or three passes on fresh skin, you're going to have a much more likely chance of this coming out looking like a tinted red into what? ever colors you've added into it. So think about it when you're doing your tattoos and you're trying to blend or overlay, put in which colors actually are like more important first, which we used to go dark to light, which is nice because that's actually working with calibrating the design. It's actually pretty intuitive, but with more modern colors where we have like 6,000 through a line or something, you've really got to think about which ones you put in first, because if you put in some first and it's all just going to be a one shot, how they mix in the skin when you do your overlays is going to be affected more by that. If you want something to look smoother, start light, add dark. If you want it to be more abrupt, start dark, add light. This goes for realism guys as well. Anyways, quick explanation today. Hopefully you liked it. Uh, if you like this, subscribe, become a member. It's a buck a month. You just give us a buck and we don't do anything for you, but we appreciate the hell out of you. Uh, and buy a hat if you want to. Uh, we've also got a cat sweater that's pretty neat. I don't know. Anyways, that's it for today. Thank you very much. This is Ryan from Better Tattooing, signing off.